Good morning. <clears throat> this is Glenny from A Nurturing Moment with A Nurturing Moment Live. Every Tuesday morning, we're going to have a special focus on breastfeeding. Since I am an international board certified lactation consultant, I've been working with mothers and babies now for 20 years. I can't believe I'm recertifying, recertifying this year for the 20th year. I love what I do. And this segment that we're going to do every single Tuesday morning, sometime between 10 and 11, is for you. I will answer your questions. We'll have a topic every week, and you can suggest whatever topic you'd like. Today we're going to be talking about milk supply. How do you have a good milk supply? The most important thing, and I tell this to moms when they come in the store while they're pregnant, and I teach it in my breastfeeding classes as well. The most important factor in your milk supply is what happens in the first four days of life. During the first 96 hours of your baby's life, you are, hang on, I'm going to make this phone be quiet. There we go. During the first 96 hours of your baby's life, every time baby nurses, you're creating prolactin receptors on every one of your milk glands. So it's very, very important that your baby breastfeed within the first 90 minutes really of life. We call it the golden hour. At the hospital, I try to make sure that moms have that golden hour where baby is skin to skin for that first hour of life. So we want to take advantage of that golden hour and let baby nurse really kind of on his or her own. If you have a non-medicated delivery, you're more likely to have really good success with that golden hour. If you have a medicated delivery, it may be a little bit harder. Baby may not nurse all by himself, but we'll help you get baby latched on. All of our local hospitals have terrific lactation consultants, and we're all here to help you be successful. So we want to nurse early. Even if you have a cesarean section in any of our local hospitals, you're going to be able to get an early feed while you're there in recovery. So early nursing and then frequent feeds. Every time your baby's awake, we want to put baby to the breast. No more time than three hours really should go from beginning of feed to beginning of feed in those first few days of life. So step one to a great milk supply is early frequent feeds. Some moms still struggle, and if you are struggling with supply, there are some things that you can do. You want to get about 2,400 calories a day. Good healthy fats. One of my favorite fats, good healthy fats, is avocado. Avocado is full of great long chain fatty acids. So we want to get lots of avocado into your system because that's going to help with your milk supply. Almonds, oatmeal are all good foods to help boost milk supply. Um, spinach is great. Leafy greens are great. You can find a whole list of good, healthy foods to boost your milk supply um, at Kelly, kellymom.com has a list of great foods for boosting your milk supply. So we want good, healthy foods for boosting your supply. The next thing you want to do is hydrate. I tell moms, if baby's not getting enough milk, if you're not making enough milk, make sure you're hydrating, especially in these hot summer months. You want your weight plus baby's weight divided by two is about how many ounces of water you need every single day. So hydrate like crazy. So 2,400 calories, good hydration, and then nurse as often as you can. The more frequently you nurse, the more milk you're going to make. Your baby's going to go through a growth spurt. When your baby is hitting a growth spurt where it seems like baby wants to nurse all the time, maybe you just finished nursing and now baby wants to nurse again less than an hour later, that's okay. Nurse. The more you nurse, the more milk your body's going to make, especially if you're nursing frequently in the early days. Some people still really struggle with supply. Most moms don't. Honestly, most moms can make the milk their babies need. A lot of moms just kind of worry because they think 
maybe their breasts don't feel full anymore. That's normal. Your breasts aren't going to feel full. By about six weeks, your breasts are no longer going to feel full like they did at the beginning. That's normal. But some moms really do struggle. And there's some things that you can do. You can eat certain foods that are specific lactation foods. Um, lactation cookies. We've got these amazing lactation cookies here. And there's a whole different, a whole bunch of different recipes for lactation cookies at our blog. If you go to a nurture a nurturingmoment.blogspot.com and search cookies, you'll find a great recipe for lactation cookies. So lactation cookies are really helpful. Um, I know a lot of y'all have said that the lactation cookies made a huge difference in how much milk you were able to make. A lot of pumping moms will eat a lactation cookie every time they pump, and that's a great idea. Lactation smoothies are great. Take an avocado, add a little bit of spinach, um, put in a half a cup of oatmeal, a tablespoon each of flaxseed and brewer's yeast, and then uh, use almond milk as a base and put in as many fruits and vegetables, strawberries, blueberries, bananas, whatever tastes good to you, whatever you like. Make yourself a big 32 ounce smoothie every day and drink, drink on that and that's going to help with your supply. A lot of moms have found that to be very effective. Um, and the Huntsville Mommy Milk Meetup page, we have files with lactation boosting recipes in them. So that's a great resource for you as well. Now there are galactagogues that you can take and I have some moms who really do find that they help. For mothers with polycystic ovarian syndrome, you're going to have some trouble making enough milk potentially. Not necessarily, but it's, it's, it is a possibility. If you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, I recommend doing a combination of two herbs, and I'm looking for the ones that I want for you right here. I recommend that you use More Milk Special Blend. It's got goat's rue, fenugreek, blessed thistle, nettle, and fennel, and it's very helpful. And I combine it with Malunge. Malunge is one of my favorite go-to galactagogues. Malenge is a plant from the Philippines, very popular if you were born or you had a baby in the Philippines, your mother or mother-in-law would make you malenge stew and you would eat that and you would make a ton of milk. So malenge is a really great galactagogue. Let's say that you're on your second or third baby and you've really had some issues with making enough milk with a previous child. I recommend taking malenge. Um, this is the Golacta version. It's the plant name is Moringa oleifera. I'm, I recommend starting this 10 days prior to your due date. You take it two or two or three capsules three times a day, starting 10 days prior to your due date, and you continue taking it after baby is born. I've seen it again and again where that helps a mother who didn't make enough milk previously make plenty of milk for subsequent babies. More Milk Plus is very similar to More Milk Special Blend. It doesn't have the goat's through, but it's a great galactagog for moms who are just struggling a little bit with supply. Another one of my favorites here is this. This is Mother Love Herbal, I'm sorry, Mothering Herbs Herbal Tea Mix. Summer Macrelis makes this. Uh, she's located in uh, Rogersville, I believe, and she makes this amazing all fresh, all organic tea that is incredibly, incredibly helpful for boosting milk supply. If you have questions, please feel free to jump in and ask those questions um, and let me know what topics you want us to talk about in future weeks. This is going to be a regular weekly feature. Thank you for joining us at A Nurturing Moment Live.